Welcome back to another SITM podcast episode, and I am your girl Tutu, and I'm bringing you guys the Artist Spotlight segment where I use this platform to showcase all my creatives, my artists, my dancers, my models, my DJs, or my entertainers, you know. This is about to be an action-packed episode, y'all. I have my co-host with me today. What's up, Charles? What's up? What's up? What's up? Yo, what's up, man? It's your boy, Sir Charles, aka Capo in the building. You know what I'm saying? We got it. Good, good guest. We got, listen, we uh, we unloading the clip today. Listen, y'all, I'm so excited for this. But before we get into this, if you guys are new, welcome to our channel. Welcome, welcome to the family. Make sure that you guys follow us on all of our social media platforms, SITM Podcast. And make sure if you guys want to be a host, or I said even a host, you want to take my job. I mean, y'all can't do that. Or if you want to be a guest, make sure that you also check us out on our email, SITMPodcast237 at gmail.com. And also check out what? The merch. Because listen, two to what's what's one thing you're gonna do is the merch all right so check us out on our website sitmpodcast.com to know all of our upcoming guests see what we got going on our blogs so all that good shebang but y'all enough of the intro y'all i'm so excited for this because i got somebody in the building i have a celebrity hey. it's a celebrity we talked about this already. <laughs> i have a, a whole celebrity, celebrity. Oh, he's just trying to be humble humble but okay Anyways, I have the honor of introducing Claude the Martian to SITN. Yo, yo, yo. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. How you doing? You no, know, I'm I'm here, man. You're here. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for you know. gracing us. Yeah, my good man Capo literally ran up on me at the club <laughs> like, yo, yo, this date, this time. <laughs> And I still find a way to be late. I apologize. It's y'all. okay. Life happens. In your head, that's all that matters. So yeah. shout out to you. Absolutely. No, no, that's right. It's all love. You, know, you, you, you come through. You know coming through, coming through, coming through. You family at this point. Listen, we're going to get right into this, okay? Because I got stuff for you. Okay. You ready? Let's go. <laughs> I'm kind of scared. Wait, I Don't be scared. I, scared. I do have a bone to pick What's with the you. Bone? What's up? It's the fact that, y'all, let me tell you what Claude did to me today. So I'm calling him. I'm like, okay, you know. Just make sure you got the address here, okay. whatever. And then we had the conversation. He like, who's Salma? And I'm like, Salma is my sister's. So mind you, it says Salma. So that means the caller ID popped up on his phone, which means Claude didn't have my number saved in his phone. We've known each other. You've known me since I was like 15. I'm it, now 27. Okay, first and foremost, is this the first number you've had? No. I answer that for you. <laughs> Secondly, Capo, I want you to look at these things right here. What 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 does that look like? This man's phone be popping. Look at these messages unread. I mean, Miss Co- yes. and I'm not even trying to be funny. Literally, it's so in fairness. No, it's not even that. I don't save a lot of numbers because okay. messages are just come through and. If I want to, like, speak to you, I know how to reach you. Right. You know, even outside of that phone number, I know how to reach you. So, okay. And that's real life. That's true, that's That's true. That's not, like, social media. That's real life. If I need to reach you, I know how to reach you. Okay, you know? I feel a little better now because at first my heart was, was bleeding small. <laughs> it was nah, bleeding small when you told even. me that. I was like, hold on now. But no, I'm, 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 we've known each other for a very, very long time. Very and I'm so proud time. of everything that you have accomplished and everything that you are accomplishing. So... You have been on this, you know, you've been on this platform before. So you're not a guest. You're not yeah, new. Yeah, 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 yeah. And if I recall, you mentioned that you're not a DJ, you're a performer. So how should I address you? And Tatena, you said celebrity new. DJ, I don't there know. There are guidelines like, to be a celebrity. I don't meet those guidelines. What are the guidelines? First of all, you got to be like super not humble. I'm far from that. Okay. You know what I mean? You got to be full of yourself to be a celebrity. I'm Again, I'm far from that. Okay. And as well, you got to be at a certain stage where you just don't care about, like, community and stuff to be a celebrity. I pay mm. taxes, so I care about the community. <laughs> so, hence why I say I'm far from a celebrity. You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah. So, how would I address you? What do you mean? No, just you, Claude. Just Claude. This is real life. You know me as Claude. You didn't yeah. meet me as anything else. And that's why I tell people when anyone who meets me, I never say, hey, I'm DJ this or oh, I'm Marsh. Nah. Yeah. I'm Claude. That's true. That's real life. 
That's it. Okay. Speaking of, I mean, how did you even get the name The Martian? You know what I'm saying? Like, Man. I know everybody knows you in the city, but so, where did The Martian come from? <laughs> see, I was able to t- say this story the first time I came here because I don't think I was married yet. But now that I'm married, I don't know if I can tell this story again. <laughs> 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 no, so um, when I started, when I really took up on DJing, um, a lot of DJs back then didn't speak on the mic. It was just, you, you just DJ and then you had a, a hype man. But I did both. And um, a young lady at that time, you know, um, she just came out of nowhere. I remember she's from Bahamas. Yeah, the Bahamas. And she was like, yo... You must not be from here. You must be from Mars because I don't know how you're able to DJ and hold the mic at the same time. Like, do you have a third arm that comes out of your chest or whatnot? So she started calling me Martian and he stuck. I just went with it. Yeah, it just, oh. I, I just kept going. You know, hopefully she don't hear this and start asking me for, you know, back pay. Right, I know, for... right? Like, you need to pay me. <laughs> pay, sis, okay? <laughs> so talk about how that, you know, you got your name and things like that. So listen, I've been hearing... Around, well, not around, but I've been mm-hmm. hearing that you was Haitian, that you was uh, uh, from Abidjan, what you was Cameroonian, you was this, you are that. So, please clear up, let's clarify because last time I knew, I, I knew you was Cameroonian. So, I'm gonna answer it like my mentor DJ Chick would say, okay, <laughs> I'm a citizen of the world, Lord. <laughs> That's it. Because, no, no, no. Real, the real talk, though, I it's not that I'm not proud of where I'm from because I'm actually from two places. But it's in my in all of my DJ career, I've always been boxed into, oh, you're this type, or you're, oh, you're an African DJ, or you're a Francophone DJ, or you're this DJ. And I've never, ever, ever liked that because in so many ways also it, it's limited the type of things that I was trying to do at some point. Not anymore, but, you know, it did that. So that's why I try not to ever, I'm just a citizen of the world. People ask, I'm from Mars. There you go. (laughs) The Martian from Mars. So the Martian don't have a country that he's from? Nah. Okay. I have a blue passport if that makes, if that (laughs) counts for anything. (laughs) So like, you know, we've known you for a while. I think you've been running the city for about... Since I came out to like Umu. Seriously. Relax, because y'all people going to start counting my age. Relax, <laughs> relax. Literally, literally. Now, I'm not going to hold y'all. Like, I was literally sneaking out and going to parties. That car was literally DJing that just because, like, it was that lit. I know Appreciate there like it. A, there was a time where people would, like, if you knew... Well, it's still actually to like this to this day, but if you see Tag Sounds, it's... A stamp of approval, like, nah, this is the move. This is where you're going to be at. Like, for you, how did you bring a collection of, of DJs together to form Tag Sounds? So, um, I've always had this vision. I, I'm not someone who just thinks about today or the now. I always got to think about what's going to happen six months from now, two years from now, ten years from now. So, I've always told myself that, and I knew this. I, you can't ever, no, no man is an island. You can't get anywhere by yourself. And I've always also been the type of person that I love to be around people and everybody help each other grow. So that's really what Tag Sounds is about. A lot of people think Tag Sounds is really about, you know, entertainment and the DJ. No, Tag Sounds is really about us, like, being able to help each other outside of all that. Because everyone that has come and gone through Tag Sounds, I always told them, yo, when all of this is done, you're still going to be a human being. So you still have to be able to hold yourself to a human being standard. You know what I mean? So if we can't be there for each other just as human being, DJing is fake. It's not real. Period. You know, he said what the he nightlife said. is fake. It's not <laughs> real. But outside of that, once you're done with all of that, yo, if something happens to you, how many of those people in the nightlife are going to come to you? Mm-hmm. But guess what? Tag sounds, we're going to come through because we're bigger than what this whole thing, right? You know, so. He said tag sound holding each other down, period. What's your team doing? That's that. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what he said. <laughs> so let's bring it all the way back. Let's bring it all the way back. How did you get your start in 
DJing. I don't want to say DJing because, I, like you said, you don't want to box yourself in. But how did you get your start? What inspired you? So, um, I went to Largo High School and Are going you to a Largo. PGP? I'm on Largo around. <laughs> <I'll be right. laughs> Home of the go go, you know. So, um, I always loved music. Always, always. I, you know, in every high school, at least when I was in high school, again, don't check for my age, but when I was in that high school. <laughs> You know, every school always had that one person who didn't make CDs for everybody. And for me, for my high school, that was me. You he know, was on I was, Lombard? I was, yeah, man. <laughs> he was Yo, on Lombard, I, I, I crashed <laughs> quite a few computers off of LimeWire. <laughs> um, what was the other one? Kazaa or something yeah, like I, that. I remember, yep. Yeah, yeah man. Get, get hey, the CDs with listen. The, yep. mm-hmm. I crashed so <laughs> many computers off of those things, but selling those CDs, I was making $5 a CD. Okay. You know, you asked me whatever you wanted on it. I remember even the Go-Go bands. I would never forget this. When CCB first came out, I was the first person in that school to have their CD. I know that's right. So I literally <laughs> was like copying the CD for everybody else in there. And that's how like people really got <laughs> like hit, you know? So, but I always loved music. I always had a real good passion for music. And um, when I um, graduated high school, went to PG Community College, I met Sam I Am there. And Sam I Am, you know, at that time, he his dad already was a DJ. Right, right, right. So he was just kind of following after his dad. And he was doing a lot of, you know, events here and there. Still, it wasn't really like a thing for me. He, he would say, oh, yeah, I'm going to this event. I got a DJ you all want to come to sure why not right. we'll come through and um back then african parties did not have hip-hop they didn't have like every the only thing african parties had was like few african songs and reggae mm-hmm, that mm-hmm, was pretty mm-hmm. much that mm-hmm. so i came in with the knowledge of hip-hop and go-go so i started burning cds for him and i'll give it to him because the thing about it all those kids were PG and Mo- Montgomery County kids. And if you know one thing about PG and Moco kids, go, go. Yeah. They will listen and they know it. So imagine w- me being able to add that to the African parties that he was already doing. Then people were like, wow, yo, now we coming here and we can hear go, go too. So that's super dope. So that's how I really got into the whole DJ thing. And then, you know, just kind of started watching what he was doing which is why I tell people, DJing is really 90% music. You got to know music and 10% equipment. You know, you can learn how to DJ fairly easily, but well, it's your musical it knowledge. Why Because I'm trying to learn. Like, so, <laughs> why does it take me so long? <laughs> like, I don't know. Are you going to teach I, me or something? Sure. You want, you want to learn? Bruh, DJing dead today, dead though, ass. is a very expensive thing. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. It's not as it's let me not as equipment. easy. Let me, let me buy. Let me. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best though. No, no. I, I, but I totally get what you're saying. So, but I'm I'm dead ass serious. We gonna talk. Okay, no problem. <laughs> but why don't you ask Sam? That's your brother. Yeah, but you're my brother too. So Sam too. I know that's a celebrity too. So that's that. No, nah, he's a real y'all. celebrity. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. So, so like you know, you kind of talked about how Sam, you know, back in the day, like you know, you were with Sam going to those first events. How long did it take for you, like, when you started DJing, to actually get paid to DJ? So, for me, it was a hobby. I had a job at that time, you know. I um, I was a manager at Starbucks at that time. I was, like, probably 21, 22 years old. And I was making way more money than I should have been making at that time. You know, I didn't have any bills. I still live with my parents. So, even probably the only bill I had was a cell phone. And what what was that like? Maybe eighty dollars. For real. So, you know, with that being said, um, I would take DJing whenever I felt like it. You know, people started really realizing because one of the thing about me was that, um, sorry, I hung out around a whole lot of different people, not just Africans. You know, Americans, Caribbeans, and all that. So I had a lot of friends and obviously lady friends from like all these different places. So I would tap into music from so many different places. And having the French background, I already knew, knew you know, the Zouk, the Compa and all that, which also is a whole different market on its own. So um, 
people would start asking me, hey, you want to come and DJ for my, I don't know, my birthday here, my baby shower, we having a cookout barbecue. I'm like, cool. I didn't know better back then. I, man, I, I think back in those days, and that was crazy. I would go DJ for like five hours and make $75. And I was Sheesh. okay with it. Because I was like, oh, man, yeah, I got yeah. gas money. <laughs> I'm Fact. good. Fact. These days, man, you can't even call me for $75. <laughs> I'm so glad that you pointed that out because that goes to my next question. So this generation now and back then, do you feel like these DJs now have it so much easier than when you started? Absolutely. And do you feel like as if you guys are being like you guys are getting the recognition that you guys deserve or at least they're paying homage to you guys? Because there's a whole bunch of new generation DJs that I feel like they need to actually like just put some respect on like the OGs like, you know, you, Sam, Chick, like Lebby, all of them, like, you know, back well, in the day. You know, again, taking it outside of the, the DJing and entertainment thing, again, real life. If you just look at real life, there's no sense of OG anymore. You know, we, we, we talk about that often. I don't want to get, you know, biblical, but like we talk about the fact that there's no sense of or presence of the grandma in the house no more because a lot of people are having kids early. So grandmas are really like super young, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. so when we were growing up, our grandmas were old. So That's there's it. no sense of that. So, you know, to, to transition into that. It, it can't really happen because if in real life they're not even aware of what you know the the role of an OG, right. how can they be aware of the role of an OG in the entertainment? That's true. You know, That's business. True. So, but such is life. Such is life. But you still feel like it's easier. Like they have it way more easier now. To a certain extent, I think um, doors are open. Doors that are, that are open for them now. We're not open for, for us sure. back yeah, then. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You know, um, is it easy? Because at the end of the day, you still got to go out there and perform. <laughs> so the performance is not easy. So, yeah, acquiring the skills and putting your foot into the building, that's the easy part, mm -hmm. which we had to really struggle for. <laughs> but um, DJing itself, no, I don't think they have it easier. I don't think so. Yeah, so, like, you know, like Tutu was saying, she kind of mentioned the fact that, like, right now in this phase, you're kind of transitioning into that OG. Like, you're still, like, I don't know if Drake, I don't know the Drake line per se, but Drake kind of said it best where, you know, I still feel like I'm young. Like, it's a young, actually, it's J. Cole. I am still feel like a young man, but I'm, I'm looked at as the OG. OG, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, with that, um, do you ever, like, grow bored of DJing? Like, do you ever feel like it's too repetitive it's the same people same nightlife same space so for me no because i make sure literally my whole djing experience is curated to the t even for myself i pick and choose what i want to do you know and i make sure that my friday is not the same as my saturday mm -hmm. all my saturday is not the same as my sunday if you come literally i promise you if you come to hear me friday you come to hear me saturday and you come to hear me sunday it's gonna be different, different vibe yeah for sure I've, so, I've and i work that. hard for that i make sure that i give that because one it helps me to not get bored you know because if you you get redundant and you get repetitive for starter, it's it's a testimony of you just being lazy, yeah. which a lot of DJs are, you know, because you you go to the club and you hear the DJs do the right exactly same the same exact sex. same Listen, thing. Listen, okay. When people feel like yo, I know what he's about to play next, it's that's a problem. A problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I it's promise y'all, you same. can't find one person that's gonna be out here tell you. Even DJs that DJ with me Friday and Saturday, peace move. He DJs with me both Friday and Saturday. But if you ask him, yo. Why is he about to play next? He oh, couldn't no. tell you. No, that's no, I've actually witnessed it. Like that's true. Like I feel like we should never ever have to go to an event where it's like I know what you about to play next. Or if that's the case, shoot, give me the ox score and I'll play my exactly. play at this point. Can you know what I'm saying? Exactly. And I feel like a lot of people don't really take that into consideration. Like they. So that goes into my next thing. So I want to talk about here he goes. <laughs> Here he goes again. Here he goes again. Listen, okay, if y'all are not up to date with what I'm talking about, so Claus started this, here he goes like this thread. It started on Twitter, and then he moved it to Instagram. Now, if y'all follow Claude on, on Twitter, like, he literally just be, like, rambling on that. I'm like, what is Claude <laughs> talking about this time? And it'd be 
early in the morning. But it'd be on some real life shit. Like, I'd be like, okay, no, this is for real. So now, I guess, like, because it's growing now, and it, it's definitely getting the, you know, the, the recognition that it definitely deserves. Yeah. And you moved it to Instagram now. So he'll talk about different things that's happened in the club. And I'm so glad that she brought this up. Because I'm tired of these things that are happening in the club. <laughs> like, I'm tired. So t- oh, yeah. Like, oh, what? I don't understand. Like, if it's not promoter problems, it's DJ problems. If it's not DJ problems, it's, it's bottle girls. Let's, or, let's, like, let's, let's, let's tackle one let's, thing Let's get time. into it. So how did that come about? Like, where did that stem from? Because obviously it stemmed from somewhere. So, um... <laughs> yeah, like you say, on Twitter, I'm always rapping, man. And someone one day told me, yo, you should you should take your tweets and post them on your IG, yo. Like, I think you would grow so much more of an audience doing that. I was like, all right, cool. So I started just posting my tweets, some of my tweets. And I don't remember which one I posted, but I posted one that literally blew up. Gave me a thousand followers <laughs> in a week. Sheesh. Yeah. And I was like, whoa. And then someone, after, because I did it like two or three times, and then someone, each post, well, after the first one, it was like, oh my God, here he go again. So I was like, okay, that's it. That's it. That's what I'm going to call it. Here he goes again, because here I'm coming again. No, for real. So yeah, that's pretty much that. And, you know, the reality of it is, I'm saying things that, everybody is thinking about everybody talks about these things in their group chat people <laughs> go home and talk about these Literally. things and nobody really comes out and say it and i've just gotten to a point in my life where look i don't look back that's it you 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 mad you mad because <laughs> at the end of the day i know what i'm saying is the truth i'm yeah. not just giving my opinion on things i'm telling you i'm saying this is what is happening you know, so if you're mad at the fact that I'm saying that, yo, you come and you post up in the club and then you don't do anything else but be on your phone, then come Monday, you're like, yo, we was lit. Do you, do you, do you miss those days? Like, because back in the day, absolutely. Like, you know, it used to be pop. Like, man, like I said, like, I, just, I came up when, like I said, Tag Sounds, when they post after the ASA. Listen, yeah. Lay La Lounge, we was yeah. out there. We was everywhere. What? Yeah. Come on, days. I'm, I'm gonna call Man, ASA go. days. There was a popping days. Yeah. yeah. Like so, like, do you as a DJ, right? Is it hard to kind of gauge that vibe of the crowd and know what songs is gonna hit because people aren't dancing like they used to, or it's just like a, a silent bop? So the thing is, first of all, as a DJ, you can't compromise. You gotta remember what you're there for, and a lot of DJs forget why I there actually in the club. They turn parties into a bottle popping fest that's not what i'm here for i don't make money from those bottles i'm sorry promoters i don't you know whether one bottle is sold a thousand bottles sold i'm still gonna make the same money so i am not about to compromise 200 people enjoyment on the dance floor for 20 people but, but Claude, before you say that, man, I yeah. just want to say you've been known to stop the music. No, 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 I have, I have, I have, I have, I have, I have. Now, see, today, that's all part of the culture. But I know how to navigate it. You know what I mean? For starters, one of those tweets was, don't bring one bottle. If, yes, don't bring out about, a, one bottle. That, yes. Don't bring that lonely ass <laughs> bottle. Excuse my language. <laughs> No, no you're outside. not outside. Don't you have, do he that. Said, he said we halfway outside or something. Like. <laughs> you in the living room. That's where you at. You know, don't do Yo. that. So I have rules. You know, if you bring out two bottles and those bottles have to be, you know, the big bottles. The, yeah. Then you know what? I'm going to do something for you. And if even at that, again, you got to know how to navigate it. Because I've seen DJs stop the music, right? Play whatever, Dory Mail or whatever uh, other jingle. And then the next song that they play is a wax song. You can't do that. Yo, the, the biggest that piss me off, seriously. So you got to be able to, whatever I'm bringing next, or oh, it's a Fire. banger. So yeah. that's one thing first. I don't care. Promoters come to me. Oh, you got to stop it now. If I don't have my next song lined up, I'm not stopping the music. That's that. No, and that's, that's fast, though. Everything that he's saying is legit because I've been in the club one time and caught, and there was no bottles coming out for like a good, like, five, ten minutes. He stopped that music for like five minutes, y'all. 
and was like, I'm not playing this. Because <laughs> like, my thing I, is, if y'all going to be in those section not partying, the least you can do is bring some bottles, bottles out. Yeah, pop yeah. bottles. Shoot, buy hookah. It's like, like $60. Right. Because like, if you're here and you're partying, I'm going to leave you alone. But if you're going to be here posting up and you're not partying, you're not doing nothing, all you're doing, you're on your phone, you're forming, whatever it is that you're doing, you got one job and one job only in that section. Bring out a bottle. Yeah. <laughs> that's it how's how's I'm not gonna point out your relationship but like let's say tax house as a whole as a group right okay have you ever dealt with any janky promoters in the city absolutely you know what I'm majority how, how do you navigate are we unloading you know, the clip sometimes you know hey man the clip is getting loaded um, <laughs> but you know with these janky promoters you know sometimes you gotta either maintain those relationships okay or sometimes you gotta overlook those relationships so before like, I go mhm mm Give me your definition of janky promoter. A janky promoter is mm. somebody that promotes an event without having the funds available. Okay. So, for example, they might say they need you for a night. You got a guaranteed spot with somebody else over here, mm -hmm. but this is your man. They're telling you, yo, I'm going to pay you more. Right. And you just wait. And you're like, yo, all right, I trust you. Get to the night of and hey. janky promotion. Okay. <laughs> I say that because, you know, I want to make sure that when I say what I'm saying, People watching understand what a janky promoter is, so there's no if, but, or maybe about it. Of course, more than 90% of the promoters out there are janky. You know what I mean? More Big than 90% of them are janky. You know, um, there are very, very few, very few that, you know, do business the way business is supposed to be. And when I say business the way it's supposed to be, it's not just pain, because business go more is bigger more than, than that. Pain. It's also about knowing that yo this is this person value because i know a club owner his biggest thing is i don't owe anybody money but guess what yeah you don't owe anybody money because you're paying people a hundred dollars so you can do that but are you paying them their worth no you're not mm -hmm. but he can be comfortable in his skin saying well i don't owe nobody money right, right. because he's not paying you your worth he just makes sure he pays you the bare minimum so that's part of business you know, as a human being, don't cheat the next person, especially yeah. if you're making money. I'm one of those people, every promoter, there's no promoter in this DMV that's going to come and tell you that I came after them for more money if they didn't make no money. I'm someone that, I'm, I'm a very educated person. I know when the party is not making money. When the party is not making money, yo... When it's done, I take my book back. I don't even talk to you. <laughs> I go home. In his backpack really I'm not going to yes. stress you out because I understand. <laughs> now, if you are a correct promoter, you're going to call me and say, bro, we didn't make no money. What can we do? Which some of them do. And I hardly ever say, yo, pay me my full money. Hardly ever. I say, yo, listen, can you afford this much? Yeah? All right, cool. Let's do this. And we call it even. You know, but a lot of them are not like that. You know, there's this one specific promoter. Oh, this one the specific <laughs> promoter by the name of Freddie Vance. Oh, oh no. he's shaking the table. Oh, table you shit. know, I said to myself that I wasn't, I wasn't going ever really say, but we I, I had, I had to come to the point where, you know, I have to say, it because Fred is one of those people that. He's been on social media quite a few times where people have put him on blast mm -hmm. about owing money mm -hmm. or whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. Bro, literally, I've had people come to me and f tell me, yo, you got problems with Fred? No. Outside of the fact that he owes me money over probably 5K plus, outside of the fact that he owes me money, I don't got no problem with the dude. Damn. Why he talks so greasy about you? I don't know. Hold on now. What does Wait, he? Wait, hold on. He said five. Hold on, five k plus. Cause you just and I still got the receipts. You just snatched my edges and you I got still the edges got the over there. Cause I what still is got happening? The receipts. Yo, so yeah. at this point, you know I'm almost follow up, Fred. You janky. So I'm gonna need you to pay my man's bread. No, I don't even want it. I just point, I've made more than that. You know, I've Facts. made way but it's just a more principle. than that. Nah, if we, you know, with certain people, I've learned that you can't even reason nor use things like principle because they don't live in the real world. And he's one person who clearly does not. 
because the way he operates he operates like someone who has no idea of how things are supposed to be like but keep in mind he's a highly educated dude yo yeah. but that's why i always say it's the educated guys <laughs> that know how to cheat the best <laughs> that's true that's how true. many times has <laughs> donald trump filed for de- bankruptcy <laughs> That's true. That's the claiming that's he don't true. got money that he does have. When people who actually don't have money can't even afford to file from bankruptcy, <laughs> you know so what I mean? True. So, like, that's my issue with him. He's someone that has been, you know, in certain spaces. He has had the opportunity to represent the African community in on so many different levels, and he's failed Damn. so many times. Yeah, and yet. He talks greasy about people. Even when I like, I don't even, I know, okay, I know I'm a petty dude. I know that. I'm very petty. <laughs> I'm mad at you. Know Listen, that. I'm the guy that, yo, if if we got a problem, yo, like it's going, it, yeah, it's going to be bad because I'm not letting that thing go. Right, right. But, you know, we got into a point a few times where I was like, you know what? I'm going to let it go. And then still I hear this and that. And he's the type of person that would deny things. He's going to see this one day. He's going to deny it. <laughs> but I got receipts. Period. I, I don't say. say anything that I cannot prove. Yeah. Trust and believe me. Yeah. The day I actually retire, I am going to just post all type of screenshots on my social media and just and Whoa, go. Oh, we have finished. And just we have go. Finished. Walk. Walk away. So if you know that you're not in the good graces, you better call and fix it. Humble yourself right well, now before. Because that's crazy. We still got a few things to address. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's, you know, I, I'm I'm friends with a, you know, my good guy, Boss Life. You know what I'm saying? Next yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it seems like right now there's a chokehold in that promoter community where there's some differences going on between the younger and older promoters. You know, okay. The promoters that have been around. Shout out to like the Vucci, shout mm-hmm, out to Nana. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. you as a DJ, what are what are some of the challenges you see, you know, with some of these promoters, these younger promoters and these older promoters? Because it seems like I said, the older promoters aren't as successful as they used to be versus these newer promoters who right. are out here getting the bag, but they don't necessarily have that structure or that guidance. So, you know, I say this often. It's a, to be everyone want to be the top dog, mm. but there are a lot of responsibilities that come with it, and one of them is to be a mentor, because that's one of the things that we're lacking today. Right. You know, the younger guys don't have someone that's willing to tell them that, yo, do it this way or do it that way. But it's a double-edged sword though, because when someone does try to talk to them. A lot of the younger guys are like, no, 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 I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. So I don't need to listen to this. You know, so it, it got to be a two-way street. But I still put the blame on the older person because the older person, you know, is a lot of the time it's a chain reaction, you know, cause and effect. The younger guys behave that way because of something else that was done to them already, you know. So it's easier for for people to always see where you fail but nobody ever remember where you hit your foot before you fail so that's where the older guys come into play because half of the time y'all find out these young guys are popping from college you decide yo let me pull him in to bring to bring his crowd and you do him crazy he's not gonna forget it so when he's in place he's gonna be like nah i'm good i made it this far by myself. I don't need you because all you're going to do is you're going to be a leech. Right. But in the same token, what they don't understand is that, you know, every different field is different. You know what I mean? Even in, in sports, I don't care. The the dimensions for an arena can be the same, but playing in the yeah, Lakers yeah. versus playing in Golden State, it's not it's the different. same. It's different. It's, different. it's, it's not different. the same, you know? So that's the thing about it. Yeah, you could have been successful in college. But now when you're moving into these, you know, mainstream clubs, there are certain things that the older guys know that you should be able to, you know, go next to them and and, and pick their brains and find out some of these things, you know, so. Kind of just piggybacking off of that, I'm sorry, but kind of just piggybacking off of that. You know, sometimes they say that the older guys don't need, don't listen to the younger guys. You know, sometimes with marketing tactics and promotions and things like that. 
you know, I take a guy like Legendary Mike. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm That's what I was going to talk about. You know, Legendary Mike is a guy where his... I think he's the reason why society is what society is. Plays so a big role in it. Yeah, yeah, it plays a big role mm-hmm. in it. You know what I'm saying? That mailing list is something crucial. But that's a skill. I don't want to say 100%, but that's something he definitely got from Fred. Because as much as I hate the dude's guts, I got to get... Like, one thing it's about not, it, yeah, I give credit. credit where it's due. Mm-hmm. Right. When it comes to marketing, Fred is like, Wow. You know, the dude just don't know how to balance books. That's it. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying with some of these promoters, you know, it's hard to come in as a promoter and convince me now to be a promoter. You know, somebody that's paying me seventy five dollars an hour versus, you know, I can go get a table package. That's not a that's not appeasing to me. I don't want to right. be paid seventy five dollars to post on Instagram to go sit, spend five hours a day like I'm expending more energy for five hours and it just don't make sense to me to be a promoter under you right where i can go and be somewhere else exactly and just experience new things. yeah so um you know again the the issue is that people in the nightlife business industry whatever you want to call it they hardly ever want to connect what real is to whatever this thing is you know like it's 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 basic science it's basic math right you know you don't things don't have to be so complicated you know that i don't care you don't have to go to school to know the most basic things people go to work they get paid per hour and they make this amount of money and they you tell them okay this is the job i need you to do that's it you agree that's it both parties agree Mm -hmm. boom now, with them, it's like, oh, I want to pay you a fixed rate, but I need you to be here for six hours. Right, right, right. How does that make sense? <laughs> you know, that makes zero. And the, the, my biggest gripe with the older promoter is that a lot of them went through that. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you hated it when you went through it. Why are you trying to do that? <laughs> like, uh, uh, that why are you being weird? Why are you being, being weird, weird to me? me? <laughs> So like, that's my problem. Like, you went through that. When you went through it, it hurt. Because I know all of these guys. Mm-hmm. I remember when they went through it. And they were mad finding out when this person, you know, cheated them out of money. It hurt. Today, you're in position to change. You don't do it. Yeah. But how can we expect them to do it when we got... A president in Cameroon who's been there for thirty plus years. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I mean, you need to leave. <laughs> it, it's starting to feel like it's in the African DNA of leadership. Yeah. So they just following the footsteps. It's, it's, it's a mindset thing. It's it's really, it's, but it's really in the DNA yeah. now. Like that is real. Tragic. You know, pe- people wake up every day and they have a choice to make. You can choose to be a better person. And then the thing about it is. You get multiple chances. Every day you wake up, you can say, you know what? I want to change today. Mm-hmm. I want to do better. I want to be the promoter. And Legendary Mike did that. Mm-hmm. He's actually the one person that I can see. Him and his team. That I can say, yo, today, they are probably Davuchi too. The only promoters who would pay you your worth and not complain, not I mean, sometimes there could be a little back and forth here and there, but they'll pay you your money. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it wasn't always like that. They had to, somebody one day had to be like, you know what? I am tired of this stress. Yeah, so I'm tired of going to war with Claude. <laughs> I'm going to pay this dude his money. I just want peace in my life. I believe it. <laughs> Ain't nobody want to argue with you. I mean, that's, what? That's crazy because I would have thought that you was the guy that's really... Like I said, when I see tag sounds on the flyer or a promoter, you know, certain certain brands have certain impacts. So when you see certain brands on certain um, promotions, it's like, all right, like you know that promotion is or that brand is gonna bring out a crowd. Pay me Fair. for my brand, basically. I'm I built this. Yeah, but you know, it, it sucks because it be your own people. I'm gonna right. just say it like that. Mm-hmm. Cause I tell you right now, anytime I go anywhere else which the reality of it is no disrespect i love the clubs and all that because the club i think 
Not a thing. The club keeps me young, mm -hmm. you know, but my money is not made in the club. Definitely, you for know, sure. It's not. So I was just about to ask you that. So what's your favorite type of scene to be like weddings? Cause you be at weddings. You be turning weddings up. Man. What? Weddings is very celebration joyous. And people be at it like they're in county society. Listen, because they want that. So what what you no, want I get to get? Like you be traveling too, you be DJing and things like that. Yeah. Like so what's your favorite I wanna say environment for you or like your favorite So event? Um, every year prior to the pandemic from I think 2016 or so I started doing um, Antigua Carnival. I was about so, to ask you. Yeah, we have. DJ. Yeah, yeah, we have a band over there called Fuse Fuse Carnival, and pretty much we're the only band in the Caribbean that plays Afro beats like mm. consistently. You know what I mean? So I, of course, I play some soca as well on the road, but we play. We actually play Afro beats, not the five songs, and then you know <laughs> and that's it. Yeah, nah, yeah, we yeah. actually <laughs> play Afro beats, and not just you know. Um, music exactly. Mm -hmm. Yo, I'm there playing music from Sierra Leone. I'm there playing music from Guinea, and nobody even from Guinea, and nobody even know <laughs> what Guinea music sound like. You know what I mean? So, but that to me has to be my favorite because I see it as a way for me to truly be an ambassador for the culture. You know, I I'm really saddened at the fact that obviously the the pandemic happened because last year was supposed to be a really big year for us. You know, so um, we were really on track. I mean, just we, we're going to get right back to it. But we were on track to really become becoming a thing where people are actually recognizing and be like, yo, we want to be part of that because um, we were really touching a lot of registration that year. So um, which is hard because a lot of a Africans, sadly, like I say, be your own people. <laughs> they would pay two thousand dollars plus and go with like you know a non-african a, a a non non yeah. uh -huh, band uh -huh. on the road and be mistreated hardly hear your music while we probably charge you half of that mm -hmm. you get food lodging <laughs> i mean and it feels more you, you don't feel like yo i'm just a, a little piece of the puzzle yeah you know, you actually feel like I'm in the band because everybody is together. Right. You know what I mean? So to me, that's really probably my favorite. And so piggybacking off of that, because I, from knowing you and all the things that you do, you're very, very, like, included in making sure that you're putting people on. So, like, every time I go out and you're DJing, you'll be like, let me put you on to, to, um, to some new shit. Absolutely. Like, this is some Franco Fomies and this is some music from Sierra Leone. This one. Like, how do you feel like, it's very, very important for you to bridge that gap between whatever type of music, because it could just be East African music, it could be mm -hmm. South African music, yeah. it could be West African music. How important do you feel like that is? Because you're definitely bridging a gap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I done heard the songs that I ain't never heard before, and I'm like, hold on, <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Yeah, I think now more than ever, for the sake of the younger DJs, is very is more important now for me to do it than ever. Like even when I was doing it before, like most people, not people, most Nigerians feel like <laughs> I'm the weirdo DJ. Why? Because I refuse to play Nigerian Just music Nigerian. all night long. Mm -hmm. It does not make sense. If we're talking about Africa, Africa has how many? Fifty two countries. countries. Mm -hmm. Yep. It is bigger than just you. Yeah. You know, it got to <laughs> be about other people as well. Of course, I'm, we know you guys have the population, you, which means you have the numbers behind your music. Definitely. But that does not mean that your music is better than... Especially seeing that y'all steal most of the shit. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm, I'm being serious. I'm breaking it down to you like this. Around the era when Oju Elegba was coming out, right? <laughs> they were really starting to go into the slow stuff. Yeah. yeah. That was Ghanaian music, yo. That was Ghanaian well, music. But there are the main people that be fighting each other. When the Azonto <laughs> vibe came up, right, the very first wave of it, again, it was called Azonto because of Ghanaians. Yeah. Then it moved into more of like a house thing because of South Africa. A lot of Nigerian artists started traveling, traveling to South to Africa. Yeah, so right. they got hit to that. Today, what's the biggest genre? <laughs> I'm not piano. <laughs> From where? South, South Africa. Africa. Facts, facts. You see what I mean? Like, even the CK Noir Titi, Love, mm -hmm. that's, that's Zook and Kompa and stuff like that. That's what that is. Right now, there's a wave of French, African, African French, French artists, artists 
that you are know, making ex- that are music. making that type of music. Mm-hmm. That's where that came from, you know. Man, oh man. So Lord. we have we have to do it, and you know, I had conversations before some of these DJs got big. Like someone like Tunes, I had a conversation with him before he really became who he is today. And I told him, I'm like, bro, traveling is really going to open your eyes to a lot of, you know, music out there. And it sure did. I promise y'all. Y'all go to some of these off-brand countries in Europe. They don't know half of these Nigerian (laughs) artists. That's facts. But they know who Aya Nakamura is. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? This girl had... She went platinum in Europe before Essence did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, years ago. Mm-hmm. No one knows that. That's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's my wife. But you wife. see, that's it's to tell you that, yo, there are people, the world is too big. The problem is people don't travel enough. That's another troll that I do. I, yeah, people, I, I always say this in the club, which I'm trolling, of course. I tell people, <laughs> yo, when you're traveling, stop going to Miami. <laughs> Stop going to Atlanta. That's not traveling. LA. That's your backyard. Bruh, fat, down the highway. Bruh, it's come on. What are you highway, doing? Yeah. Stop doing that. You <laughs> Like, even at the bare minimum, if you cannot travel because you don't have a passport, go to Puerto Rico. Go to St. Thomas. These are yeah. U.S. Right. territories. Yeah. Yes. You know what I mean? I don't they, think people you, know that, too. Travel <laughs> is going to... Op- Yo, we went to St. Thomas the year after the hurricane hit over there. So things were not really open. The only club that was open there was a Dominican club. Guess what, though? I came here, my reggaeton was popping. <laughs> it was popping. No, I was DJ one day at Cowdies. I was playing all these reggaeton. Oh, one yeah, the bottle girl yeah, came yeah. to me was like, Yo, are you Spanish? <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> but I know the stuff. No. But that's what traveling does to you. Yeah. You it know, that, that's that's what Why it does. Your to you. Yeah, man. It, it's important. <laughs> and even just outside of the music, just culturally. Culturally, it opens your eyes to the type of struggle that people are, you know, are, are experiencing out there. When I go to Antigua, Antigua literally reminds me of Africa, yo. I'm not going to lie to you. I Like, the way people live in Africa, it feels like, in a lot of ways, it's like that in Antigua. I've been to freaking Tortola, same way. That's the British Virgin Island. Same way. Um, even Jamaica, you go to the slums in Jamaica. Yes, it's definitely. The same thing. Yes, definitely. Same and they, and they, and they have you thing. there. Exactly. Definitely. So, like, when after you travel and you see those type of things, it humbles you. Yeah, definitely. You come back true. home and your mindset is different. You realize that I can't be here arguing with Freddie Vance. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why would I be doing that? Let's let's switch gears for a little bit. So I would say so over the years watching you and following you, you have someone that who's um, you know your DJ has been widely notarized. You typically get calls for when these big artists, these big name artists, um, come to you know come to the DMV. Mm-hmm. How is it that you know these up and coming artists? You know you're kind of like that bridge. Okay. Between the up and coming artists and the artists that's already there. Okay. So when artists approach you with music, how do you decipher? Okay, this is worth, you know, a play or a spin, versus and then an introduction versus you know this ain't even up to par. To me, it's always first and foremost. I play everybody music. Mm-hmm. Rick Flex oh, knows I that. Know. I play everybody yeah. music first. <laughs> like if if I don't do anything else, I'm gonna play your song at least twice. Yeah, yeah. for a fact. Oh, yeah, least. I witnessed that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you don't gotta pay me for that. Right. So yeah, that's to me, right. first and foremost is about your approach. You know, come at me correctly. Play like, my shit. <laughs> that just going in the trash folder immediately. <laughs> like immediately. Have you had people like do that before? Of course. <laughs> and then they try to throw money at me because there's some DJs, some celebrity DJs that are out here doing that. Oh, you gotta pay me a hundred dollars. Why? Why do you... I don't need to take money from you to do what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if I can help you, and then I, after you blow up, you don't even got to come back and say thanks to me. I don't need that. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, your life does not, like, impact my growth. It doesn't. Now, if you choose to include me in your success, that's great. We're all winning. But I'm not going to expect that from you. So, you know, to go back to your question, yeah, it's really about the approach. And secondly, I'm going to listen to your song. Because one thing I hate to do is when people give me the song, like, yo, can you 
play right now? Can you try to spin it like right now? I, I'm doing a disservice to you by doing that. Yeah, because you don't got it prepped up. Exactly. You don't, you I need to listen, to, listen to your song know. and mm-hmm. know to myself, I right, because anytime I play someone's song that people don't really know, whatever song follow has to be a bang. Mm-hmm. So I need to make sure, how do I do it to where it makes sense? That is the best possible outcome for you. Right. So that's secondly. And then, you know, third, I, I give you feedback and also how you how you receive that. Because if you're the type that if I'm telling you that, bro, you know, I think you can do better, a better job of mastering. Because my feedback is hardly ever on the actual content of it because that's creative work. Yeah, that's art. I yeah. can write. I cannot dictate. Who am I to say, oh, your red is not red enough? <laughs> That's the red you chose. You know, so I can't, I, I hardly, hardly ever do that. You know, sometimes I can tell people, you know, about, you know, the lyrics. I can tell you lyrically that, yo, um, maybe you should step it up a little bit lyrically. Or, um, like, okay, for example, I told JQ this one day. Bro, all of your songs, you're chasing after the girl. Make a song where you're not chasing after her. You got her already. Make a song where she's chasing you. Make a song where she's a side chick. You know, because, right. you know, mentally, as a writer, it's going to push you. You know, a lot of artists get comfortable with the pen, and they don't really get out of so that, that, you know, box. exactly. Yeah. So, you know, those are the type of things. And also, I'll tell people that, yo... When you make a song, be mindful of the cussing that you're doing in there. Because if your song blow up and you don't have, oh, there's really a, no way to make a clean version without it really impacting the song. Y'all heard some songs before where they were cussing. <laughs> and when you're playing the clean version, you're like, I don't even want to hear this song. <laughs> exactly. It would be looking like the, think- shade, the shade room pose. You don't want to be playing exactly. that. I hate that, by the way. Yeah. So... I tell you, yo, you got it. When you're making this song, think big. Think, yo, if I have to edit this song for radio later, is it going to lose its essence? Mm -hmm. You know, that's it. Oh, my gosh. Going so, lighten it up for a second. So, when we be at the clubs, I remember you just spoke about, like, a girl coming to you like, are you Dominican? What are your top five no-nos when you're playing a set? Like, what are some things that you just like, nah, bro, like, I can't. If you're drunk, <laughs> bro, that's my number one pet peeve. If you're drunk or your friend, if you know your friend is drunk and you see them coming to the DJ booth, <laughs> hold, hold them back. He got to play hold my them back. Son. Because, because <laughs> not only am I the DJ that will embarrass her, but I will get on the mic and talk about her. Oh, my so God. So save her and all of us and the yourself. embarrassment. Right. <laughs> Because no. I will do that. I don't care. Like, so that's one. Two, I hate when people smoke weed around me. Okay, you know, yeah. That's outside just, of yeah. DJing, my voice has really been another avenue for me to make a lot of money. You know, so I'm not a young man anymore. When I'm out here late and you're smoking whatever it is that you're smoking, <laughs> yo, it be messing that up. That man said, y'all ain't smoking. Y'all some smoking Reggie out here. <laughs> like, yo, sometimes I'm like, what are y'all smoking? This cannot be weed. It's weed mixed with hookah. Man, something. <laughs> because, I mean, it smells really bad and strong. And worse too. is you don't even have the decency to say to yourself, yeah, yo, like this man is at work. work. Mm-hmm. Let me not blow the smoke his way. <laughs> But it's Corona out here. <laughs> we still in the panoramic. <laughs> so well, what panoramic what are you doing? Why are you blowing this smoke my way, bro? They're like trying what? to give you a special effect. You nah, know, like, oh, yo. I, so that that's the, that's yeah. The weed to me is just a no, no. And then I mean, third, um, I don't really like a lot of people around me when I'm teaching. I like I'm not one of those guys that want the whole hood behind me. Nah, I was born by myself. If I'm a fight, I don't call nobody to fight for me. I'm a fight by myself. No, if I get beat I up, hey, it is what it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I don't like when it's too many people around me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't like because I have a very short attention span. So any little thing around me, I'm going off. So 
Yeah, that's pretty much. You said five, but I, I only got yeah. three. You know, everything else I can fix with being petty. <laughs> Lord, okay, all right. So we about to wrap this up, but what are you looking for? Or what's next for you in the next, let's say, twelve months? And how do you want to be remembered? Well, I remember you. I'm not dying. <laughs> Please, wait a minute. What is happening here? How do I want to be remembered? No. Don't like, put my face on a no. t-shirt. I'm just saying. That's no, all. not even no. Because listen, when you say how do you want to be remembered, so I will remember. You, well, you ain't dying. Go off a beat. But like, if I since I know you, right. I know you as an OG. Like I said, I've known you since what I was 15, sneaking in the clubs and no right, ID right, and things right, like right. that. You know, like giving me all the bangers and also being that mentor as well. So that's how I remember you. So right. how would you want to be remembered? Like leaving a lasting impact, or you know, just changing the game for the diaspora. Yeah. The game is going to be the game. It was the game before us. It's going to be the game after us. So I don't really care about the game. I just, again, real life, yo. I just want to be remembered when when people, you know, when someone looks back at their life, they're like, yo, I remember the day Claude called me and asked me, yo, what you doing with this? How you doing? Like, you know, whatever. Like, just like when I found out you graduated, you yeah. know? And I hit you up, I'm like, yo, congratulations. Yeah. That's the type of person I am because that's what matters. You know, everything, all of that extra stuff, nightlife, the DJ, nah, that stuff don't really matter because the reality of it is probably what, in the next maybe two, three years, I'm going to be done with it. And then what? Hey, I still wait, have wait. to be so a regular, that means, are you a real in the human next being. Two years? Are you retiring in the next two years? Because you can't retire yet. At least let me get married. I mean, like, it, it has to, it has <laughs> like, to happen, you know, in order for me to say I've grown. But can you wait till I get married? <sighs> you taking too long. <laughs> What's going on? Let me interview you now, right? Are you dating? What's that? What's that? that? You single? I'm single. You single? I am. Yeah. Why are you single? You got? Are you talking to people though? Are you dating, Alice? I'm not dating. I'm, not, not? I'm single. Cause I don't know. This DMV is just I don't know. It ain't about me right now. I mean, no, I mean, <laughs> you no, know, you you you're pretty decent. You know, and and successful, pretty decent human being. Let me land. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> my man was still taking off. He was on. Let the me land. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nah. <laughs> so you, you should be out there. You know, meeting people. You know, that's it's, that's it's nice. important. Not only just off of you know being romantic, but by meeting people, and that's just that's the working. one thing that a lot of pe people are scared of heartbreaks. You shouldn't be scared of that. You know why? Because it's gonna teach you about yourself. Moving forward, you're going to know what I like, what I don't like. You're going to be able to to recognize those red flags from yards away. But if you don't put yourself out there and you, you never, you know. That's you know. true. Two, two things uh, that you mentioned. One, bottle pop, bottle pop and culture. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that's only something that's prevalent in the DMV? Absolutely like not. It's Go to Atlanta. Abs oh, man. Atlanta, they're building <laughs> clubs without dance floor, bro. You didn't see the yeah, bottle girl that was in the they, that was in the casket. They, there was a girl in the casket, and she's a bottle girl. Like literally, the casket is closed. I said you people are playing with yeah. life too much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's they legit. building nightclubs without dance floor, yo. Like if you go to leave, there is a dance floor because leave has been there, but nobody's dancing. With yeah, it's a bottle wars. You know, yeah, you people are dancing in the lobby of leave more than they're dancing inside <laughs> of leave. You know, so yeah, I mean, I sadly. Yeah, sad, sadly, that that's what it is. But it also has to do with someone again waking up one day and say, you know what, I want to change things. A promoter has to wake up one day and say, yo, I want to be different. I want to do things differently. I learned in this project management class that yo, people don't know what they want. Yeah, that's right. For that's so what the it's presented <laughs> that it's so you have to present it to them which also goes back to the reason why I have to play different genres of music because nobody knows what they want I did people know they wanted Jerusalem I was playing Jerusalem <laughs> before the shit was high nobody knew they wanted that that's true that's true until the video came out and they were dancing they eating were dancing. you know <laughs> Then now Jerusalem is everything. Oh my God! Everybody's on. Are you gonna play Jerusalem? Yes. That's auntie. the auntie's. That's the auntie's no song. I'm going to play Jerusalem, song. and she does it while she's on the Facebook Live and everything. <laughs> Join me. One last question. Yo. And then for me, um, you talked about how 
the African Afrobeats scene has grown okay. you know, ex- exponentially. Mm-hmm. But African promoters or those older they have yeah absolutely not pushing it. Like, why do you feel like that is, and where do you what do you feel needs to happen in order to get to that next level? Very simple. If there's a lack of innovation, you know, everything else around us is innovating. These microphones didn't look like this five years ago. Facts. We weren't able to be able to sit here in front of this camera like this 10 years ago. Everything else is innovating. We are the iPhone, what, 13? Yes. <laughs> I'm done. I'm tired. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm honestly I'm done. I'm not upgrading. Like, I can't. So, <laughs> literally, it's the same thing. Like, Afrobeat has grown from when, you know, Two Face was Rocket, probably taking yeah. like $5,000 to Burner Boy asking for $80,000. <laughs> So when things are, you know, growing, you have to move and innovate with, with that growth. And they're not doing that. I look at the, their counterparts. You look at the things that the Caribbeans are doing. One of the biggest festivals in the DMV right now is Culture Fest. Mm-hmm. Put on by Caribbeans. There are more Africans here than Caribbeans. Caribbean facts. That's a big fact. How do they have that? And we don't have such a thing. You see what I mean? So there are so many things that I can keep naming to point out to you all that there's no type of innovation with the African promoters. You wake up today, put out a flyer, boom, there's the party, which is which is why people like me as a DJ, I'm like, okay, the least I can do is give it some type of, you know, difference with musically. That's the least I can do. Right. But it cannot end there. It cannot end there. I don't remember the last time we had a legit African themed party. You know, I was just saying I don't that. Remember I was just that. saying that. Yeah, November is about to come, so everybody's gonna be doing an all black party. Why? Why? Somebody should wake up and say, you know what? I want to do an all black. What was that? Gala, all, what is the all black? For? All black ball. What was the point of the all black? Like, what was black that? Friday. Black Friday. That's, that's every yeah. year. You know? Right, but I was uh, always or, trying to wonder why it was black. Why couldn't it be red? We should have a <laughs> we should have a before we going back for Dirty December party. Yeah, you know, do do <laughs> different true. things, that's man. True. Do that's di- true. there's so many things that can be done. And again, before the pandemic, those were things that you know I sat down with the promoters at Elevate, and I was telling them that yo, I would literally come up with a whole calendar of themes that we can use because one of our very last thing that we did at Elevate was Compa versus Afrobeats. They doubted it. But when I tell you there were so many Haitians there that they had never... These people did not even know Elevate existed. <laughs> yeah, That's true. That's how it And means. that's why I've yeah. been trying... Even there are Africans in this DMV that have no idea who Nana Frimpong is. Because <laughs> people live in, in this in box... In 2021? Yeah. There's, no, there's, there's so people, many yeah. Africans here because... People really believe that a lot of these promoters believe that they are the center of the world and the center <laughs> of the DMV. No, you're not. There are so many Africans here that are doing other things. I've seen pe- more people at a housewarming than at a nightclub. <laughs> that the housewarming. <laughs> seriously. Now imagine. Now seriously. Think about um this guy right here. His wedding. I don't want to say his name. You know this guy right here. His wedding. Uh-huh. How many people were there? Uh-huh. One. For, forget <laughs> me. Let, let me not, let me I know the numbers. I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm you know, about but this. they had enough people that could have packed a club in there. Yeah. I'm. Let me not even go far. His brother. I hardly see him in the club. <laughs> And these are Africans. He himself, I hardly yeah, see. Yeah, these are Africans who live in the DMV. <laughs> but guess what, though? If someone well, say, yo, I have a house on me, yo, y'all come through, they're going to be there. They're going to pull up, yep. <laughs> but you know, you know one of the main reasons, outside of the fact that, yeah, the club is not for everybody, but the, one of the main reasons is because they're like, okay, I be, the last time I went to a club was a year ago. Let me go today. They go, it's the same thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. same people. It's the same literally, thing you say. Literally, so literally. why should they feel like they're not missing anything? <laughs> you know? So that's what it is, man. Aww. We are Yago's party tonight. <laughs> there you go. See? And that's the listening party. It's not even a real party. Yeah, y'all gonna have another one? 
Lord. Oh, well, this has been great. This has been great. We didn't even really say nothing bad, well, man. No, we know we really did it. Yeah, this was pretty decent. We had loaded the clip, but we did gentle. But don't worry, we're gonna we're gonna have we're gonna have part two. We're addressing that on couch. We have a part three to this because this is your part two. You've already been on here once. Part two. We'll have a little part three for you. But where before we wrap this up? Because I got a game for you. I got a game for my guests. Oh Lord. But where can people find you? Listen, we we could you can find them at Cowdy's. Society. Society. Fridays, Fridays, Cowdies, Saturday, Club Elevate, Sunday, Cowdies, the day party, though. Okay. The day party. And then on social media. Social media, Claude with an E, D I, Martian. I hope you can spell Martian. You can find them on Twitter because somebody's yeah, always retweet, uh, retweeting it's his stuff. Everywhere. It's the same thing everywhere. the same thing everywhere. If you don't follow Claude the Martian. If you don't follow him, y'all, I don't know wild. what y'all doing. That's wild. Like, that's crazy. It's entertainment, y'all. He's Just serious. follow me for entertainment. He's serious. I live for it. <laughs> All right. So before we play this game, mm-hmm. what's your favorite time uh, time slot to DJ? My favorite time slot. I actually like to be the opening DJ. Really? Yeah. A lot of eh, eh, everybody. No, everybody wants mean... to. Cl- no, no, no. Not that I can't. Uh-huh. Obviously, I can yeah, close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to me, it's more fun when I open because I get to you play the what tone. I want mm-hmm. to play, and I know that you know as the first leg in the relay i know better because sometimes you have people that come and play before you they don't know better why are you playing the hottest song at 10 o'clock right now when people are walking in <laughs> yes! so and then you know that the, being the opening dj is an opportunity for you to really take people on, on a musical journey take them back take them to a place where they haven't been in a long time thank hey, you i ain't hear this thank song in a while why are so, you playing way too sexy while i'm collecting food exactly <laughs> So like, that's oh, that's why I really I, I like that more than Oh my god no Because the ending is too easy. But the, All you the do ending is come is and play hits. That does not make you a good DJ. Well that's why we just like you for the whole entire time. I just prefer you play the that's whole entire time because That's true. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna play a game. It's called Finish the Lyrics Game. Jeez. That's why I asked you, I said, How good are you with the lyrics? Because you be on that mic, you See, be on okay. you be on there. There's talking. a difference for me though. <laughs> When I'm playing this song, oh, I know all the lyrics because it, it comes back. <laughs> but just off the top of my head, I don't know. We, let's, okay, let's, let's see. see. Though. All let's right, see. let's see. So I have, I have uh, four lyrics. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna start it off, and you're gonna finish it. I so, hope they're popular songs. Yes, all they right. are. Okay. So you have to tell me who rapped it or sang it okay. in the name of the song. All right. And then the uh, then the last one I have name of songs. And you need to tell me who sang the song. Okay. All right. And then also, before we end, can I have one question for both of y'all. Uh, Is that fair? That's not hard. That's not hard. All right, all right, let's go. Cool. All right, so <clears throat> the first one is mm-hmm. I'm feeling vibes on vibes. I'm feeling vibes on vibes. Mm-hmm. I'm killing dynamite. I don't know if he's <laughs> I'm killing dynamite. <laughs> Nothing kills. My right, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. It's Era Star, uh-huh. Bloody Samaritan. Good job. Yeah. All right, so it's I'm feeling vibes on vibes. I'm a ticking dynamite. I'm a ticking dynamite. I'll blow yeah, your yeah, candle yeah. light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, okay, you're you're right. Right. Those are the words? You're right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Chum- you know, no, that's how we really be. We be in the club like, uh, and then people on the answer room are like, no, mm-hmm. get it together. Mm-hmm. All right, okay, so tell me what is. What is the capital of Peru? Para. <laughs> Good job. Okay, so it's actually Peru. Lima. Para. Lima. Peru, Peru, para. Uh huh. I'm loose. <laughs> Good job. Who said that one? I mean, yes. um, <laughs> fire boy. Mm-hmm. Scorpio. Yeah. Good job. All right. Okay. So this is this is a kata side. Okay. Let's see. All right. I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here looking at Keisha like. Yo, my favorite rapper out there right now. Okay. Money bag. Yo, yes. whoa, Keisha. <laughs> I'm right, sitting yeah. here looking at Keisha like, do you love me or do you love me not? Good job. Oh, that's Come my guy, now. yo. Okay. So these next ones, they're actually French. I had to Ooh. find. <laughs> oh, man. I had to find. Because you're always trying to put us on to music. So I'm like, okay, let me at least try. So excuse my oh, Kayla okay, said. I should have seen Okay, so. I go leave you, I go leave you, jamais, jamais. I go leave you, jamais, jamais. Uh-huh. Jamais, jamais. Mr. Leo. Divorcé, yeah. Mr. Leo, jamais, jamais. I didn't did it all once. I just said it. That's my song. <laughs> <laughs> my lifeline, yes, okay, lifeline, yes, okay, lifeline. Call a friend, call a friend, call a friend. It's my Good song. job. Okay, cool. Jamais, jamais. All right, so you got you got four of the. All right, so we're gonna do the next three songs, last ones. All right, 
So, who sang? At this point, I already passed. So, even if I failed. You passed. Thing, you yeah, did yeah, pass. So, ding, ding, ding. We'll give the ding, ding, ding. All right. So, who sang Yes, Bamenda? Oh, dang. Yes, Bamenda. <laughs> Yes, Bamenda. I'm going to give you 10 seconds. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, can I just ask one question, though? Uh-huh. How old is the song? Is it an old song? Because there are two Bamenda yeah, songs that song. come. Kotobas? Yeah. Ah! I was like, there are two Bamenda songs that come to mind. I just needed to figure okay, out yeah, which yeah, one. Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay. Really this one, I, can't, I don't know how to say it. Okay. Uh, 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 um, Jésus. Je suis. Je suis. Mm-hmm. Aousa. Je suis à où ça petit pays. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good job. Okay, yeah, the yeah. last one. Um, hey, girl, you quiz hard. Damn. All right. All right. The last, the last one is uh, et et puis et et puis quoi. Oh. Uh, ah, you did it. Uh huh. Um, 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 et puis quoi, Jovi. Yeah. Wow! <laughs> dig, 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 Joe, dig, dig. Joe, Listen yeah, here, I'm just literally, I literally put that. I said, let me find Calderon. Let me find French musical. <laughs> Yo, you really went out of the whole job. Because That's I knew what you were going to do. Hold on. So I knew you were going to do. Okay, so see, you passed the test. Visually, so ding, 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 ding to you. Good job. All right, so before I close up, what's your question? All right, so both of y'all, y'all stuck in an island, separately, of course. You have an iPod that only has five songs. What are the five Ooh. songs? Oh, Gucci, I think I love it. You know, that's my anthem right okay, there. Gucci, okay, I Gucci, I, Gucci, I think I love her. Uh-huh. Um, I want to put uh, I want to put a Kofi Olumide song on there. I just don't know which one. Uh, we could do Lloyd. 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 We could put that on there. Um, right. uh, let me do genres then. Sierra Leone. Now, it don't matter. Whatever you want. But you only have five songs. So don't put your country in there just <laughs> because you want to be a countryman. <laughs> you need these five songs song to survive. Song, right? Uh, 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 um, dang. Uh, all right, you I, get I, two. I, okay. Get, I, all right. I, I, I got future. Think about the other okay. thing. I got future coding crazy. Okay. I got, I don't know who sung the song, but it's a Sierra Leone song called Tomalemba. Okay. Yes. I will take. Let's go back. Oh, I'll, yeah. Okay, I'll take Two Face, African Queen. Okay. Why? <laughs> Bro, I love that song. Uh, I would do um, Casey and JoJo all my life. I'm, okay. I'm really a, a, a heart. You gonna be sad on this island, bro? bro? I'm here all by myself. <laughs> Lonely as hell. Sure will be. And then um, I'm gonna do Future again. Thought it was a drought. Okay. Mm, okay, I got mine. Tams replay because that's definitely on okay. replay. That's definitely on replay. Um. Uh, uh, this is uh, all time because you know think no, about I, 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 it you're there for a year you still gonna be messing with terms like that <laughs> I'm just asking okay wait let's put terms out oh, wow. um, uh, uh, um, we do a whiskey song we can do a whiskey song no I'm just talking at this point at this point feeling peachy Kodak Black okay that's the, you know. Really? Yes. Wow. Okay. Yes, that's really my no, song. No, I like that song, but I'm surprised. Um, I would put it in top I would've, 25. I would have but... said no flocking. Nah, I feel like I really like. That's, a, that's all I can really think of right now. So you give us three. You got two more. Come on now. Of all the music out there, come on. I like Ratchet Akata music. That's fine. If that's your favorite. Uh, dang. Oh, okay. Let me put some twerking music in there. You know oh. I like to twerk. Okay. <laughs> All the energy that you have, you want to twerk. Okay. No um, problem. Um, 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 um. We got Trina. Trina. Look back look at back it. Jeez. I got a little bit. What this? That's okay. what happens when you take them out of the DMV and send them down south. That's <laughs> what so happens. And. Got one more. Uh, uh. We're going to throw a go-go song in there. We're going to throw some new impression in there. New impression? Mm-hmm. Which one? I don't know. I wasn't Don't matter? It don't matter. It don't matter. Right. Yeah, it don't matter. Yeah. That works. That works. That's pretty interesting. Who's your favorite up-and-coming artist to listen to right now in Me. the DMV? In the DMV? Favorite yeah, up-and-coming artist? I'm just saying the DMV. We're going to keep it local. A, so, for me, and it I'm depends. Biased. For me, it depends. <laughs> Lyrically, I mean, I ha- I. It's gonna sound like I'm saying it because it's here, but lyrically, yeah. reflex. Lyrically. Lyrically. Oh, now, good job. Oh. Now, <laughs> now, vibes. 
It used to be Manny Wells, but I don't fuck with him like that no more. No, so, no don't do it. Don't do it. Um, no. I like I like Toby Drills. Toby Drills. Listen, vibes Toby Drills. Toby What's Drills. That? Listen, Toby. I've been trying to get you on here, but you was too celebrity for me. So at this point, I'm gonna reach out to you one more time, Yo, and that's out, it. Shout out to all the up, up and coming. Yeah, shout out to y'all. Y'all you know, fire. Jay Ado. It's like, nah, let me not say Flex, I don't fuck with Manny Wells. Like that. Manny Wells. <laughs> I don't want to sound too bad. So, I got I got an issue with him though. But SG. me saying it sounded so harsh. I, just, but, I, I, mean, I replayed it, it in my head. It sounded really harsh. Lord. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you for stopping by. No, yo. This has thank definitely been like me. jam-packed. Like I'm this we definitely need to do a part two of this. Let's you need to come it. on the couch talk. You know, what we is got a couch talk. So we, can we, set it up. we actually got a I've couch talk. Seen it. What is the difference between it's the it's the um X rated talk about pussy money weed. Oh. <laughs> nah, but we, we actually got one that <laughs> fits. That's, 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 that's right in your schedule. You know what I'm saying? We got a few bottle people coming. Legendary Mike is setting it up. Oh, okay. we can, we, we're going to okay. discuss nightlife in the DMV. Yeah, we, think, need you, we need you. And here he I think goes the date again. is the 13th. The oh, 13th. He's, he's already booked. November. November. If you're not booked. But no, Legendary Mike. Mad familiar. Yeah. Legendary Mike is the one putting it together. Shout out to you, Legendary Mike. Shout out to Yaya Lucci. Shout out to uh, uh, Expect Greatness. This man Shout out the whole nightlife. Hey. I'm just saying, shout out, shout out to them. But they're the ones putting it together. We got a couch talk where we can discuss yeah, grievances. We're going to talk this out. We're going to set it up, though. So. Yeah, it might work. But I might work. Thank you for coming out. Oh, Appreciate you. Me. Yes, oh, sir. I mean, let's just establish I am the best. International DJ. In the Period. DJ. There's no if, but Kevin no, 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 no. no And I stamp but, this. Okay. Oh, baby, about it. I don't care about it. Whoever feels like you know they can tell Period. me differently. Period. Listen. Your own listen here. I want you to get this. Okay. I want you to get this. Listen here. I want you to get this. Okay. And this. And this. My end name this. is Isatu Bangura, known as Tutu. And I endorse that message that Claude is the known international it's, DJ best out here. It's a fact. It's, it's a fact. <laughs> Drops mic. It's a fact. Close this out to you, baby. <laughs> All right. So this has been great. Like I said, thank you so much for stopping by and joining us. This is definitely going to be a banger. So all y'all better check this out. If you guys are new to our channel, again, welcome to the family. SITM podcast on all of our social medias. Also, make sure that you hit that subscribe button, which is below, because you guys always say that point up when it's really actually down. So, shout out to y'all. Um, make sure you subscribe. Also, make sure you check us out on all of our social media platforms, like I said. And this has been a wrap. Thank you to my co host, Charles. Thank what you up? for tapping thank in you. with me. No, thank you for uh, coming. You know, on, no you know, problem. Shout out to the team. Shout out to my producer out here, Uncle Reflex, our husband out here. We outside. Husbands. We outside. Okay. Shout out to you. Shout out to the team. A cheery that was here. Shout out to you, Ma, AK, Inez, Choo Choo. Yeah. I think I have to see you, right? Shout out to Shout out to Shout out to, okay, oh, shout out to my man. sister. My sister, my road dog today. So shout out go. to you, Tom. <laughs> All right, so this has been a great one, and see you guys next week. Peace out.